Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about WebAssembly and TypeScript. So this video will go into how to create a project using WebAssembly and where you code in TypeScript. And we're going to use a project called Web uh, Assembly Script. First off, we, before we do anything, we need to set up a simple project, a uh, node project or npm project. So we start with typing npm init. And this project will be WebAssembly TypeScript. It will be version 0.0.1. And it's a simple example for testing uh, assembly script. And we can have that as an entry point. We don't have any test command. The Git repository will be github.com slash lastbuffer slash webassembly type script git. And no keywords. I'm the author and it's a MIT project and I want to save this. Yes, thank you. And after that, we can run the installation of this assembly script. So we'll run npm install save dependencies assembly script assembly script. And this will install all the things that are required to actually build and to set up new project with assembly script. So now we have the dev dependencies to create something with assembly script. So now we need to start off by creating and bootstrapping a project. And they have actually uh, created a little script here with which we can run with mpx and then as init as in assembly script init in this current directory. So we do a dot there and uh, they ask us if we want to create something here. This command will make sure that you have the following files. There we run this. This command will make sure we have the following file assembly. And then we have a configuration file for TypeScript. And then we have this index TypeScript exemplar in entry file. We have some build artifact directory with a git ignore in that. So it will be ignored from the source control. And then we have the main file for loading WebAssembly module and exporting its export. And we have a package JSON. And the package JSON we already have, but let's proceed here and see what we what we get. And we actually got some untouched and optimized uh, WASM files in the build directory as well. Have a nice day. Oh well, thank you. So let's see what we actually are um, working with here. We have an assembly directory and here we have this really interesting function which takes an integer 32 in uh, two of those and add them together and return the answer for these. So this will add a plus b. So it's a very simple function. This configuration file here says that we will include everything in this directory and so forth uh, that uh, ends in TS. And it also extends this assembly script standard JSON here. And then we have the build directory, which is we have an ignore in that. So we will ignore all WASM and WASM map and ASM JS in this directory. And um, the modules. We don't need to look at those. And here we have something that will define some exports, give them back to us here. So this is an optimized WASM that will be built and the compiled module will be loaded. And we can run an instance of that as an export here. So that's the uh, example project that we got. And uh, I'm not really sure what it actually gave us here, but I also have the instruction that we can run npm uh, run as some build. So assemb uh, 
assembly script build. Let's see what we get then. I guess it will create these WASM files now. And um, so now we have in the build directory here, we have some WASM file, we have some optimize what and what. <laughs> so there's is, uh, the assembly code. So this is how the function uh, add will look in WebAssembly code. Uh, and then we have the binary files here that uh, it ha also have created. So it will create an optimized one and an untouched one. Next up, let's try to use this uh, function now. So we will create a simple index.html here. We will create some HTML uh, 5 document here. We use template. And then we will create some script for our JavaScript here. Let's see if we can have better script tag. Script like that. Oh, didn't give us too much more. Uh, fetched. Uh, build. Optimized. Let's see what was it actually called build uh, optimized wasm so now we will fetch that into our system and if we get that then we'll use the result and what we will get is actually some response and that response we need to actually take that response and get the array buffer from that response. So we need the actual bytes of this assembly. So response array buffer. So there we have that. Then we can take that array buffer and that we will call buffer. And we can do WebAssembly. And initiate and instantiate. That's the name of it. And we do that with the buffer. And you can, if you like, have some extra parameters here, but we are not required to do that at the moment. And then when we have done that, we will have a module. So this will be the module that we will use. And <laughs> There's a lot of thens here. Then we need to have the exports of that module. So var exports. And that will be module instance exports. And the, these exports has the actual function that we want to use. So let's get the add func from uh, exports add. And then we need, want to use this add function. Um, so let's see if we can actually console log add function and then do five eight or oh, five nine. So we will add five with nine using our very simple WebAssembly here, and uh, so let's try. Uh, let's see if we can have. Do I have a Python installed? I think I have Python in tools. Uh, Python. Uh, we have Python. Exc here. Module HTTP server. Leave that. How you start? an HTTP server, the easiest way you can. So let's uh, swing a little window over here. And we go to localhost 8000. Let's see our console log here. We actually got 14. <laughs> it just works. Cool. Mm. So let's switch over here again and let's say that we have some h1 here the answer to life the 
universe and everything is and then we have a span here id uh, result and we stop that span and we do in that h1 and down here we will get document get element by id this result and then we do uh, inner html equals add func and here we do uh, 21 plus 21 like that if we go back to our browser reload the answer to the life the universe and everything is a 42 <laughs> So, uh, now we have done some TypeScript uh, magic here. We have created one little function in TypeScript. Shall we try to do one more function? Let's try to do multiplication instead. So let's export a new function here. Let's call it multiply. And let's do same here, but we just change that up. That should be easy enough. And here we will have the mul function and multiply like that. And let's see here, 42, can we do 21 times two instead? And now we actually need to build this again. So let's see if we can stop the server down here. Look at the documentation. How to build things. 2.0. Run as build. Okay. npm. Run as build. So in our package JSON, we have as build here, so we can run that. And it will actually run as build optimized and touch untouched so these are these commands that we see up here so that's what's been added to our little uh, template here so we have run these and if the server is still running we actually was able to stop it here after a while and if we go back here we get 23 because we used the wrong function i guess do we still use the add function Let's go back and check. Yeah, that's not right. Let's try our new mull function. So go, let's go back and 42. So now we have created two very simple WebAssembly functions. We have built the system and we have worked with it. So if you like TypeScript and you like to write TypeScript code, you can use WebAssembly quite easily. Uh, WebAssembly is good to type code that you want to run natively on the system because you want to have more uh, of the resources of the computer. For instance, you want to do something that might be a bit compute heavy. Uh, for instance, you can use it to scale images or rotate images or things that you need the GPU, for instance, could be a good choice to use WebAssembly. Uh, on this channel, I have uh, done some WebAssembly in Rust before, and I've also have a video where I do just WebAssembly native. I write native code in WebAssembly and compare that to Java and so on. Um, TypeScript is not something that I write every day, but it's very similar to JavaScript. So it's something that you can pick up quite easily. And I think this is was very easy to get started with. Uh, the only thing is how you actually get your WebAssembly to use it on the web. And that was not that hard anymore because you, we have standardized a lot of that in, um, in HTML now. So you can just fetch your WebAssembly you get the array buffer, then you have a built-in function that in instantiate that buffer, and then you can just get your exports and get your functions from your WebAssembly. And independent on what language you actually write these, 
and export the function in, you can get them by using this technique. Uh, I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions, suggestions, or anything that you want to uh, sp speak to me about or the community, leave them. Leave it down in the comment section down below. Um, if you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.